Hello everybody and today we're doing pastel portraits using a limited palette of just primary and secondary colours. I will go through these in a minute and the types of different pastels you can get. Um, now I often use this as a way into drawing with pastels. When you've got an array of colours and you just do not have that colour you need, you need to learn how to blend the colours on the paper. And actually using colour theory is a very useful thing to do. So I've got a couple of examples here of demonstrations pieces I did uh, at my portrait class at the Friends Centre. And uh, so these are just very quick, but they're to show how uh, you get a really nice zingy drawing if you limit yourself to uh, primary and secondary colours. This is on ordinary white cartridge paper and uh, you can use white to blend colours and the colours will blend themselves and neutralise themselves. So here I think it was probably red and green or something and it's neutralised so you can get a really nice drawing. That, uh, doing that and I wanted to show also the difference between working on a light paper, a white paper and a black paper. So here's another one I uh, did as well, same model, same time, on black paper. And it's a whole different ball game when you're working on a dark paper with pastels because you're actually modeling the light rather than leaving the paper to be the light. So here we are again, you've got this nice zingy colors um, uh, all dancing against each other. With pastels, you get this optical mixing, which is the color mixing happens in your eyeballs rather than on the piece of paper. And this is why I'm against smudging. I know a lot of people like to smudge pastels, make them have a smooth finish, but then you lose the colors and you lose the liveliness of your drawing. That's why it's sort of frowned upon. I've got a couple of examples here what I did earlier, practicing, as I haven't done a portrait for ages. Uh, these are on a much smaller scale. Uh, it's nice pastel paper I happen to have lying around. And uh, these are the ones I'm going to be working on. But I did these with these nice um, pastel crayons. And this rubber is really useful. This is a little rubber that uh, works like an automatic pencil. It's very useful for pastel work because you can be very precise. Uh, these are pastel pencils. They're quite hard, generally Conte, I think, mainly. And, uh, but you have to do a lot of cross-hatching uh, to build up the color. Uh, it works well on a small scale, not so much on the big scale. So I'm going to be using these stick pastels uh, for my main drawing. Um, <clears throat> right, let's crack on. So here I've got a piece of paper, piece of pastel paper. It's not exactly white. It's kind of off-white, nice little grey. Uh, but I wanted to use it. It's got the pastel paper texture. I haven't actually got any white. Um, and uh, so let me find my subject. So first we're going to do this lovely looking young woman from Vogue. And what I'm going to do is start, let's get myself organized. <coughs> start uh, by using charcoal. Charcoal I always find very useful to have knocking around when you're doing a pastel uh, because it's nice and easily erasable and it's not as black as the very black pastels. Uh, um, so I just wanted to go through actually my materials as well before I crack on. Uh, so here we have, these are the Rembrandt pastels, a set of eh, 15 half lengths, very good. If you get half lengths, you get more for your money. Um, and they're, they're harder than your average, but they're very good um, and a very good selection as sold in Lawrence's, has gone up hideously in price, no doubt. Um, and uh, so they come with a good selection and I often recommend my students buy these because it's just a very good selection. And the colors you want um, when you're using a uh, a limited palette of primary and secondary colors. I generally like to have, uh, this applies to anything, painting, whatever, um, but also pastels. So you generally want a warm and cool version of each of them. So there you are, warm and cool reds. These are quite soft, uh, which are nice pastels, but they're a bit chunky. And then I've got a warm yellow and a cool yellow. And I'm cheating a bit. I've got a bit of Naples yellow as well, which is kind of more neutral. Um, and then the blues, I've got this nice dark blue. Sometimes with pastels you just can't get the tone right, so you just have to add black. Um, but um, I've got a nice dark blue there. So for instance, if you only had this set, the way you could make that darker is to add black to it. And then uh, that's lighter blue, and then 
I've got my secondaries so I've got a light green and a dark green and then a purple very nice dark purple and then a lighter purple with this one and uh, what's the one I'm missing? Oranges! There's a dark orange and a light orange. I'm down to my last little stub of that. So that's basically my palette. Um, and then I've got black and white, obviously. And uh, <clears throat> they're just useful for doing some detail and getting the tone right. But generally, I do prefer charcoal because it's not quite as dense as the other one. And it's also much easier erasable. <clears throat> right, here we go then. Uh, <laughs> I think it's picked up some pastels from the previous thing, but let's crack on. Okay, so I've got a bit of charcoal here, and I'm going to draw the face. Um, <clears throat> I need to have it so I can see it properly. Um, uh, this is from this month's Vogue. Not that I usually buy Vogue, but I needed some faces. Um, so I'm just going to go in there with my charcoal and put in the basics and you can see you can just go like that and it's all disappeared more or less um, and then I want the eye line and the nose line which is sort of here and I'm just going to go like that and get rid of that and then I'm going to start putting in the salient features giving her a cheekbone coming down here and pastels, you can rub them out. I think I'm going to have to have a big uh, rub out in a minute. And I'm just trying to get the shape of her head right. And then looking at what she's, what her eyebrows are doing. Very nice eyebrows. And here, and that, and then her mouth here. And the chin there. I'm going to leave out the hand because life's too short <laughs> to do that um, <clears throat> and what works very well is the rubber with pastels and this has got a bit mucky already so I'm just going to rub some of these bits out and that's why I like using charcoal it's really easily erasable <sighs> so there's my template as it were <clears throat> and then I suppose I want to give her a neck let's give her a neck it's sort of here and swan like neck and actually her chin is much narrower and we're here and here I'm just getting everything in the right place okay so I'm going to go on and I'm going to be very bold <coughs> I'm going to go on with uh, my red and you'll see how it blends on top so here got nice warm skin here I'm using the pastel on the side so it actually bulks up. So I'm just going to put some red in where there is red. Well, where there's sort of darker tones. And then I will add some yellow. So I'm just blocking it in. And then I'm going to add some yellow to that. And you will see, magically, you'll get some flesh tones. And over here. So I've just... And I go a little bit crazy, I think. So I want some yellow there. So I'm looking at layering up colours. And uh, so I've got the red on, so now I'm putting this on. And it's going much more fleshy, more fleshy toned down here. And that's darker, in fact. And then I'm going to pick up oh, some purple. Sorry, thinking on the hoof here. I just want to put in some darks. So she's sort of darker over here, and she's got these lovely cheekbones. And we're going down here. Um, and I just want to put in where the darks are most prominent, so I can sort of orientate myself to what this portrait's doing. And it's sort of dark over there. Maybe I should put in some hair. So I just want darks over here. And just now, the colours are so zingy. I ho hope you can see them at home. Um, I'm going to use a bit of blue as well. I just want to have that darkness here and there. And then I'm going to layer some things on top. So it's kind of dark there. And it's got darkness there under the nose. 
and over here Ooh, I didn't do the ear so I'm just going to go all over the ear with red and maybe the deep orange I don't know just to get more fleshy tones out of it um, <clears throat> and then I'm really going to start so I've got some basics on there sort of broad brush strokes as it were uh, my under painting as it uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to this is orange I'm using uh, my actually cool orange now I look at it I just want to go in there and you can see where I'm putting on top of the purple it more or less neutralizes so I'm going to come down here and go in there and maybe have some here so I'm going to do this first and then I'm going to think about adding white so I think she needs ooh, some orange over here and here and shaping her chin what's going on here okay so back to my favorite the purple so I want to define her nose a bit I think get it in the right place and I'm using purple to be a dark tone and then I'm putting the line between her lips in and that nice little dimple there and I think it comes down a bit further that way um, and again I'm going to add some tone for the hair um, and then I want something going on here and here if I do my eyebrows in purple go on and see what happens and then I'm going to use the cool red because I'm noticing how the lights falling on her face now and I just want this over here I think in fact I've erased her eyes completely just lightly putting that on catching that looks a bit butch at the moment I must uh, feminize her up and then some dark red for the lips and I'm just going to add that and I think I want this here to be her sort of the shadow on top of her eyelid mark around her eye so I think I'm going to have to grab my handy dandy little rubber as I seem to have dropped out gone over where her eyes going to be and I can just go in there and re find some light areas I hope let's try this one oh there we go you can erase pastels <sighs> uh, <coughs> And then I think I'm going to go a little bit crazier. I'm going to, yes, use my dark orange to define what's happening over here. And you can see it's actually neutralized with the purple I put on as the tone. And I want her nose to be here-ish. And then we've got our lovely cheekbone. It's coming down here. And I think I have to just bringing that in a little bit. Um, I think I want a few, few more layers of pastel on before I actually start adding white. So here we are. This is a red that's actually sitting on top of the purple and the blue I've put on. And it's neutralizing. So you can find most colors with pastels uh, by layering them up with a limited palette like this <sighs> right hmm and then I'm going to think about adding some white areas this is an off-white paper so the paper will uh, the white will show up more on the paper than it would on an actual white paper but you can see I'm getting a really nice blended pastel effect so you're using this to blend the pastels but you have to have the bits there before you put it on otherwise it ain't gonna work so I think I better put some uh, I'll put some darker red here I think just to get that tone there and then you've got something nice happening here these are very chunky pastels so it's quite hard to get the detail sometime but and up there and again I think I want a bit of that purple just to darken areas where I want them a little bit darker 
It's going to like here, maybe there. Yeah, I've lost our eyebrow. And just on the edge here, and you can see it's it's mixing with that pastel underneath and going a bit more neutral. Um, <coughs> which looks rather odd at the moment, so I'm just adding some charcoal here for her hair. Kind of goes round down like that. Comes in here, and then she's got an ear. might be reduced to actually <coughs> uh, using black. I'm actually going to use the charcoal to start defining some features now, I think. Um, so I've got the purple here, which not many people have purple eyebrows, so I'm just adding this black to it. Oh dear, the eye's in the wrong place, but never mind. And over here and getting, you've got this direct gaze, and getting that to work is actually quite hard, but uh, if you look at the whites of her eyes sometimes and look at where the gleam is, that's often a, a big help. So I'm just going to go in there with my charcoal to be my dark, but I might add a bit of the actual black so let's see what this is eyes doing actually looking at her she's got lovely eyes yeah. uh, this is what you don't want to do with pastels is actually raise them because then they smudge so I'm going to use this as well just to refine the light under that eyebrow I think that will probably do yeah. Uh, and then I'm going to use my dark red to describe what's going on there. And I better make her eyebrows equal, so I've got to go in with purple first, and then I'm going to use a bit of charcoal. And again, looking at what her eyes are actually doing, which is useful. And looking at that light on that lower lid which is always very important. So she's got an eyelid, she's got an eyelid. <sighs> nah, it's not working. So let's go in there and see if we can refine the light there. <sighs> and come over here. Oops. And now is she looking at us? Not really, no. But sort of uh, and there's a bit of shadow here the the whites of the eyes are not bright whites you can see this is actually in shadow so hopefully that will all come together at the end and i'm going to go down here try and define her mouth when i'm doing mouths i like to do the middle bit first that's the most important bit and how that relates to the nose which is sort of here and her omelette thing Right, let's have another layer of pastels on that. So I'm going to actually use my orange. Of course, she's got makeup on, which is probably orange. I'm just going in here and layering it up to bring about fleshy tones, I hope. And that's there. And that's there. Whoa, her forehead's too big. Just going in there, ah, and then maybe some dark orange in here. This is the disadvantage of these very big pastels. It's quite hard to do the detail, but they are lovely and soft. Um, I think they're a French make, but similar to Unison, in fact. And where else do I want to want to sort there? And then we want some shadow under her nose. And the softness there. So I suppose most of this comes with practice. Oh my god, her ears gone very peculiar. Uh, this comes with practice of knowing what how a medium is going to respond to what you're doing. Uh, and sometimes it's rather hair raising when you're doing something like this. It's in, oh, what's it doing? And it is pretty hair raising. So I just want maybe a bit of red there and a, create a kind of roundness here. And uh, 
maybe a little bit of red here and here and her lips as well let's get that dark red in and you mustn't think of lips like lipstick although this does look like me thinking about lips like lipstick uh, because it's actually a three-dimensional form in space not just an outline oops um, and then I want a darker tone so I'm going back to my favorite purple I just want to go in here and look at what this darker tones doing and it's layering on top of the things I've got there already so we got that and the shadow of her nose which is always very difficult you often end up giving women uh, moustaches and I'm just going over the lips actually because <coughs> the top lip is often darker and in fact this is a bit further that way hmm. and she's got a much slimmer chin so I'm just going to shape that a bit and look at her cheekbones again hmm and then up here to bring her hairline down a bit oh let's have some of that nice dark blue let's see what that does Give her blue hair and catch what's going on here hmm okay let's get the white out again it's a mucky business this pastels but all this all these marks i've made hopefully will be erasable <sighs> ideally i should have pinned it to my board and i'm just going to go in with white and vague hope i might be doing some modeling i don't know i think i want a little something going on there and maybe some cool red in here i want to make sure my layers are on before i start adding the white and then there's all sorts of stuff happening around here. Ooh, yellow. Let's have some yellow. A bit of yellow here. Her. Now that's got a bit mucky. And in fact, with pastels, you do fill up the paper. Uh, so with a smooth paper, they fill it up quicker. And uh, um, this paper, in some places, getting full. So the pastels are not uh, sitting on it nicely. But I'm going to get the white out and start modeling the lighter areas and over here and over here and over here see it's actually blending the colors on there i don't want to go crazy now because otherwise i might as well use my fingers so i want a quite a light area here <laughs> That defines her nose and then over here this is light it doesn't much look like her but let's keep going and then this is lighter too so this is actually almost like blending with your finger but uh, don't, don't blend with your finger and then I want to look at what's happening with her lips so she's got this nice white gleam on her bottom lip and a bit there and then the eyes, so I want to have that lower lid lit and the upper lid lit as well, which is very, very sparkly makeup. And over here, so here you can really see that the color is blending, the white is blending the colors underneath. And then I could think about doing some ear, 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 over here. So let's have a little bit of this dark there. Her lips are looking rather odd. And I might go in with some charcoal and do some more eyebrows. <clears throat> and I'm going to get the black out because I do want her hair to look more reasonable than it does. So when you've got curly hair like this, I find if you follow one or two of the curls, Ooh, look, she's got kind of orange tints to it up here. And it's doing something over here. Look. And then I can actually define her ear by doing the hair right. I mean, and get 
liking that idea of this nice wiggly mane of hair. So I'm just going to use the black to emphasize her pupils, I think. And she's not looking at us. It's very tricky to get that. Uh, but I'm going to just have a little bit of emphasis here and there of darker shapes. But sometimes you just want that dark shape. Actually, that goes down there. Maybe some eyebrows, maybe. And then looking at her mouth. So getting these nice dimples at the corner of the mouth is often a good way of <coughs> indicating where the muscles are lying. Hum. So I'm just thinking about it at the moment. And I think I want to try and get... Ah, that's what's wrong. The whites of my eyes are not right. So I'm just going to contract her pupils a bit. And get this white in. There you are. She's almost looking at us. This is wrong. That's what's happening. So to get this kind of direct gaze that uh, portrait artists have done for hundreds of years is to get the model to look at you. That's why self-portraits will have, you will have a direct gaze of uh, the artist because they're looking in America at themselves. Now that's sort of rough and ready. I'm just a bit concerned if I go on working on this Um, I'm going to mess it up because it's got this nice zing to it. Hmm. So let's have a little bit of white up here. I'm just pressing very lightly, so I just want to look at the wh what the white's up to. It's particularly white there. And then over here. And then just here. And sort of over here. And it doesn't much look like her, but I am going to contract her neck because she is very swan-like. Nice. And I think I've got the eyes too far apart. And one nice th thing to do sometimes, it's only because this is an off-white paper, not an actual white paper, is so I can go in and add white here cover up my mess a bit. So you're getting more of a stark contrast with the light and the dark of her face. Now with pastels, um, the best way to preserve them, and in fact I should um, uh, have used pastels halfway, I mean use a fixative halfway through. When you're working on a pastel and it's kind of precious to you, uh, you can fix them as you go along. Ooh, I might get out my Naples yellow. Ha ha ha. Is it cheating? Uh, so I just want to use some Naples yellow here. It's a more subtle yellow. So I definitely want to go in there. Ah, no, I've given her a Hitler massage. See, I knew I should have stopped. Um, <coughs> yeah, maybe over here. And a little bit over there. <sighs> oh, it's annoying. Maybe the white will rescue me if I put a bit of white there. Got a little bit of gleam there. And then to the ears. So I just want to add the shape and the shadow that's within the ears. I'm not going to bother with all the jewellery. I think she's advertising jewellery. I'm not entirely sure. If not handbags. Uh, and then I'm going to take the darker red here. And actually a tiny bit of purple. That will blend on the paper. Now my ear's too small, but never mind. Uh, so I just, oh dear, that's see, see, see. When every time you make a mark, it gets worse, it's time to stop. And I'm just trying to appraise it now. I think her forehead is entirely too big. So I just want to go in there. Mind you, she has got quite a big forehead. Uh, and then she's got sort of a parting here. And then just to add these nice 
orangey gleams to her curls. So I'm just going to put some of this on. And there you are, you have brown, because they're all mixing together. Okay, so this is, ooh, lovely curls over here. There you are, she's looking a bit more human, not entirely like her, but I just wanted to show you how to layer up colours in a pastel drawing. And here we are at part two. So now I'm going to work on black paper. A couple of little hints about working with pastels. They do tend to have a brass rubbing effect, and this is a knackered old board that's been through a bit. Um, uh, so I, what I've done is I've actually put several layers of paper, well, at least 10 layers of paper underneath, so I've got a nice smooth surface underneath that will take, uh, will take away any lumps and bumps uh, on, from your board. And I'm going to work on this. This, unfortunately, is not pastel paper. I don't seem to have any black pastel paper. It's just um, uh, a piece of black paper. It's a bit thin and a bit smooth. Um, so, but it's nice and black. That was the main thing. Last piece of black paper in the house, if you don't count the sugar paper. Okay, so uh, <coughs> I'm going to work um, on this. I'm just going to see if charcoal shows up. Probably not for you. So I'm just going to very lightly block in uh, what he's up to. This is George Clooney uh, in his younger days, looking very gorgeous. Um, uh, I can't guarantee to get a likeness, but let's just do the pastel anyway. And if you notice, his head's on a bit of a tilt, so I do want to get that tilt right. So I'm just going to go lightly on with uh, white chalk. Uh, unfortunately, the top of his head's missing, and there's an ear. Whoa. I know he's butch, but, <coughs> and I just want to get that eye, eye line right and the nose light. So it's just a little bit of a tilt, looking very sparkly. His shoulders are there, and he's got a neck here. Um, and then I'm just going to use my hand to get rid of most of those white lines. Often when you're working on black people, paper, a lot of people make the mistake of actually uh, doing a lot of white lines on it. But I want the black to be part of the shadow and if I've got a lot of white on there it's not going to work. Uh, <clears throat> so I might go in initially with a yellow in fact. I want to put the light in first so let's have it so I can see him a bit better. Yeah, sort of there-ish. There uh, <clears throat> so I just want to look at where the light is and again this is a an exercise I do with my students just for them to start thinking about drawing the light or the pattern of light which I'm sure my students are absolutely fed up with me talking about but the pattern of light is really important oh dear this paper's seen better days but never mind and top lip chin other side of face so that's the kind of the first wave and a bit of a neck so that's a light color I'm then going to go in uh, with a bit of the orange to kind of blend in a, a skin tone. Come down here. Yes, this paper's been through the walls, I think. And over here, and over here, and we want something going over there. And then uh, I think. I think I better get some white on because he's looking a bit odd. So I'm just going to, again, it's drawing the pattern of light. So I just want to go in here and I want to be able to leave some of the black paper to be the shadow. So that's where the light is. So I'm using the uh, pastel on the side and looking what the light's up to. Catching the edge of his nose here. There. And then his top lip. And over here the edge of his face and the chin. Look, the Turin shroud effect as I often call it, where you can just put some blobs on and then you've almost got a face coming out of the uh, <coughs> ether at you. Okay, I just want to test out what colour this is because this is a very black paper, this is dark tone, but it is that, whoa, it's a, that's a kind of a purple isn't it? But Let's crack on. It'll all be fine in the end. So I just want to put the shadows in here. 
where his nose is casting the shadow and then he's got the shadow on his neck. So it's having that confidence to layer up colours. Ah, uh, there's not much shadow here, but I might put a bit in. There's quite a bit there. So I'm going to resort to using my dark blue as well, because that purple is very purple. And now it's going to turn blue on me. And down here. Uh, I'm just going to go over this gently with blue. So I've got uh, some sort of uh, idea of where the shadows are. <laughs> Um, and then I'd better do a bit more modelling, hadn't I? So let's use... Uh, so this is my dark orange. I just want to go in here a bit more, figure out what's happening with his eyes. And over here, so he's got... that's well lit there. He comes down here and there's a bit of reflected light down here. And of course his mouth as well. Ah! And the bottom of his nose. I think I'm going to be reduced to actually putting some salient features in here before they all wobble off. So let's have some eyebrows. This is just charcoal. And then his eyes are here. And let's have some charcoal over here. Getting that eye line right. Looking a bit cross and fat. <laughs> I'm just going to go in here. A handy trick with pastels, if you can find something the same colour as your paper, uh, you can cover up loads of mistakes. Uh, and then I think I better define what his nose is up to, because I think I'm getting a bit lost. So here we are. Nose. Nose. Coming up here. And then the mouth quite nice and smiley and down here so there's shadow there so I think I better go in and uh, buck it up a bit so this is my dark red in fact so I'm just going to layer that on top and you can see it's almost gone pink and then over here ooh, that's an interesting color I've created and over here and then we've got his nose, which is more or less like this, I think. Hmm. And I want to put some red on ah, on the top of all that. And maybe over here, that reflected light. It'll all be fine in the end. Um, and then down here, oh, I think I want my orange for that. Down here, a bit of orange. And maybe over here. And then when I put these colours on top of each other, they do tend to neutralise a bit. Ah, no, I don't like that at all. But let's keep going. Uh, OK, I'm going to attack it with white again. So I'm just going to press that little bit harder to get the light areas with the layering up on the colour underneath. And over here, let's do a nose. Ooh, let's worry about the rest of his nose in a minute. So we're getting that edge of light on his nose. His top lip. It's over here, and that. Ooh, gosh, he's got quite a big chin, which I haven't given him. And then this nice light catching his cheekbone, going up here down here. Hmm, that's very interesting. Doesn't look anything like him, but it's interesting. And then over here. So again, this is not quite as well lit, so I'm just pressing lightly. So catching the top of his uh, eyelids there. Ooh, and we've got the bottom eyelid there. And over here, a bit of lighter. And this is a very smooth paper, so in fact, now that paper is more or less full. Uh, <clears throat> and it's going to be hard to actually get any more pastels to stick on it. So I think I want my Naples yellow, I think. Ooh, that's coming out quite yellow on this. So I'm just going in there and trying to sort of sculpt the edge of his face. 
and his nose, which has gone wrong, but let's persevere. And uh, oh, that's further down, isn't it? So I'll just try to do his umlat, and then you've got this nice area here, and the very highlighted chin, and then a bit of a neck. Uh, <coughs> hmm. And there we got something going on here, and again. The bottom of his eyelids are lit. And then we've got, uh, <coughs> I want to layer up some more flesh tones within there. So I think, uh, then again, I'm going to take my dark orange, and it's actually sitting on top of blue there, so it's neutralizing a bit, which is good. And over here, and over there. So that's almost creating a flesh tone. Yeah, and I just going to go over that, and that is a flesh tone, really. So let's look at what his face is actually doing. So there's something over. Oh, I might use a bit of green, which is going to be very light, but there's a little bit of a reflected light there, and just very lightly trying to sculpt his face. Oh no, let's not use that. Ah, right. Let's go on. And so this is my, again, my dark orange coming over there. And then let's get some of that blue out. Because blue and orange are kind of opposites on the um, uh, colour wheel. So I just want to make sure I've got uh, some neutral. Uh, colours in there, just to neutralise these areas. Oh, I haven't got his mouth right at all, but never mind. Uh, <coughs> and I just want to have a little bit of shadow here, but I think I'm going to use my dark red. Eh, that's gone pink on me. Kind of uh, looking like a as I say, the Turin Shroud effect. So we're getting this kind of blobs come out of, the, of a blank piece of paper to say, oh, look, there's a face by catching the light. Ooh. And then, uh, what am I going to do? I want to do something with this Technicolor nostril I've put on for some mad reason. No, that's not right at all. So I'm going to go in with blue, in fact, in the vague hope it might neutralise a bit. And then my dark red up here. And then I suppose I ought to be brave and think about the eye. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to go in with charcoal, because as I say, I prefer it to dead black, but I might be re reduced to using dead black. Let's see if I can bring him to life with his eyes. Ah, oh, that's what's wrong. So let's have a little bit of something going on here. And something lighter on top, creating sort of eye shape. And again, when you're doing eyes, often look at the whites of the eyes. That's a big help to get this direct stare. Yeah, and the gleam in his eyes, so he's got a gleam there, and a sort of gleam here. And the eyelids actually in shadow, I mean the eyeballs actually in a little bit of shadow. And that, uh, you want to uh, create, uh, look at the shadow within the whites of the eyes, because then you get the idea, the, the eyeball is in fact, a round thing in a socket. Uh, let's see if I can get the shape. So often when you're trying to get a likeness, is trying to get the shape right. And he is quite butch, isn't he? I haven't given him a butch enough chin line, I don't think. 
and that, oh, that mouth is terrible. But let's have a look. So this is the dark red. Oh god, that's horrible. Let's do the dark orange, which is a bit too light. But I want that to be his sort of bottom lip. And then he hasn't got much of a top lip really. Ah, uh, and then. Uh, orange in there because it, that was a bit on the pink side and let's see what's going on here so up here it's quite a gleam just there but it actually does disappear around the corner a bit of orange there but I don't think that chin's deep enough or big enough so I'm actually going to go in with black because it's the same color as the paper and try and develop this in a better way and in fact in my sketch I did actually uh, maybe I don't want that much green but I do want to have a reference for where his shoulders are and a cunning trick you can do let's hope it works is that you can layer up so I'm actually going to layer up my dark red on this green and that should neutralize it a bit so always have in mind uh, the color theory Okay, let's see if we can get anything going on his other eye. I'm just going to see if I can refine my black paper to make sure I get it right. So what I'm going to do first is actually put in this lower lid, which is sort of here, and then the whites of his eyes. Eek. Uh, looking what they're actually doing. And then the gleam of his eye. Oh dear, that's terrible. Let's get rid of some of that. And ugh. and then another little tiny bit of white in his eye. And then I want to look at the gleams. And I want to put in, oh, I'm going to use these because these are slightly harder and not as big. We've got sort of an eyelid there catching over here. Hmm. And then yeah, this has all gone horribly wrong. Ah, let's get that chin right. And then I want to get he's got this sort of muscles here. And a nice cheekbone over here. Which I'm just trying to get ah, light. And as this is such a smooth paper, it's um, filling up really quickly. So I'm just going to use some black here because I want to get that chin right. And what actually happens over here so, so this is t-shirt and ugh. and then what I'm going to do is actually find the rest of his head I know it doesn't look like him so uh, um, you don't have to tell me but I just wanted to show you how to layer up colors and how to be bold with pastel colors um, <coughs> So I'm going to actually define uh, the rest of him over here with something, um, uh, eh, maybe with this, very light. Oh, no, that's too light. <laughs> what colour to use? It's going to turn pink on me, horrible. I'll stick with this light one. So I'm just going over here, and you can actually, so you're looking at his shape. And he kind of comes up there. Where's his ear in relation to that? So he is sort of looking down. And then we're getting the idea of uh, <coughs> how uh, uh, the, you can use the paper to be part of your background. So here I want it dark where he's lighter, and here I want it light where he's darker. And I don't like that at all. He's got this nice salt and pepper hair and an ear. And I 
think I've made him a bit too butch. Bring that in. And then what I'm going to do is see what happens if I go with black. Ah, oh, yes, that's taking it down a bit. But you, I don't know if you can see, it's kind of smudging because now the paper is full. Yes, that was a mistake, but never mind. Crack on. going over that. I just want to catch that shape. And then we've got his hair over here. So I'm just putting a bit of black on so when I put white on it will kind of blend with it. And then he's got something going on here. And an ear. I suppose I ought to try and do an ear. So I'm just going to very lightly. This has already got blue on it so this is going to neutralize. something wrong here um, so again I think I just need to bring that in a bit and then that up a bit maybe right and then for his lovely brown eyes I'm going to use my dark orange in here and then I'm going to have to correct it it's almost impossible to use that finely. And then over here, and then we have another eyelid over here. Oh, we've got that little tear ducts. Give him a little tear duct. And another tear duct. And why has that gone purple? That's annoying of it. Right. And this has got too small. what his mouth's doing. I think John Singer Sargent said uh, to find a portrait as a picture of someone where the mouth's gone slightly wrong. <laughs> so even he had his problems. I'm just going in there with a little bit of charcoal to define that a bit more. But what's happening here? Maybe have a bit of dark orange in there. And her here to define his hairline. Let's put a bit of hair in because people do have hair so I've got a bit of white here trying to catch what his hair's doing. Uh, I don't know what it's doing up there because I can't see <coughs> but he probably hasn't got a peculiarly oval head. Hmm, and I'm just going to go in here with a little bit of black on top. I want to deepen that tone a bit. And over here. And then I want to look at the reflected light in here. Yeah. Again, probably with my dark orange. And just going to go on top of that. So layering the colours on top of each other. And I think I need to do something over here. So orange and blue will neutralize, but I'm going to have to use a bit of black. Um, I don't know what else I can do really because this paper is so full. So I'm just going to have a last stab at modeling the light. It doesn't really look like him, but it does look human. So I just want to catch little bits of light here and there. There's something wrong here. Damn. Over here and over here. Okay, and just there. I'm hoping the modeling of the light will bring it all together. But it's not looking very likely at the moment. So I want to catch that very light area of his nose. So I catching the plane of his nose, which I wish I hadn't put the pink on, or the dark red. But that does go up like that. And then over here, we've got that, ooh, maybe my Naples yellow will do that. Just to catch, oops, his eyelids. 
Let's try and see. I think his eyelids are all wrong. Uh, let's put some eyelashes on. And a little bit of maybe orange. It's there. And I want to neutralize this down a bit. So a little bit purple on top of that. And then there's something happening here now I look. Uh, so this is a bit of dark red to catch the light that's going on there. Uh, and his chin's not big enough. And you can see, so there was blue on there, and I'm just putting the orange on, and it's neutralized. And then a little bit more white, maybe. Just here. Just lightly looking at how it's modeling the form just here. And a little bit of light there. No. Uh, all right, let's see what I can do about his eyes. Because this one's really wrong. There we got one mad staring eye and one not so much. Okay. And that just needs to be a bit bigger. And the gleam. The lightness just there. And uh, take it up a bit. And let's have a little bit more white just here. Catch that eye. Well, it doesn't look like Jude Clooney, and I think he's got a squint. But I just want to give you that idea of how colours layer up. In fact, I just want to show you. So if I put on a, a great big swathe of orange, woo, and then add blue to that, you can see that that sort of neutralises. And then if I have a deep, deep red and put a deep green on top of that, that again neutralizes. So don't be afraid of color blending on uh, <coughs> with pastels. Um, not with your finger. So that's yellow, and then if I add some purple on top of that, that again neutralizes. And I can put some more yellow on that. And we're getting quite a nice neutral color. So colors will mix on the paper when you do pastels. Oh dear, this is a bit of a grisly one, but what I'm going to do um, is just tell you about fixing them. Uh, so you can use uh, fixatives, and what you're supposed to do is do it little and often from about two feet away. I'm not going to do it myself because I think these are going in the bin. And um, so do it two or three times from about two or three feet away. And with fixatives, with commercial fixatives that you can buy for pastels, they smell so poisonous. I would do it outside. And also you can use firm hold hairspray, which works very well. Again, little and often from about two feet away. Okay, um, I will see you soon.